been with us throughout this meeting, give us the wisdom and insight to do the things that are that are worthwhile for our community, and in all things, be in your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Place the flag, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Again, I'd like to welcome everybody here to our council meeting today. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from the previous meeting? Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Okay, first on our agenda, uh, Martin Blaylock has asked the council to consider annexing two parcels containing approximately 50 acres located off uh, road and drive. There's a map three pages in in your packet on this. Marlon had uh, come by the office uh, one day last week and left this. He owns property that is bordered on three sides by the city limits. He has asked for consideration for this to be annexed because his plans in the near future are to subdivide this plan, this plat. Um, he is the sole property owner, so in this case we can should y'all choose to do so, this is just an FYI type of meeting right now, we can do this without going through the legislature. <coughs> uh, and I told him it would be after the first of the year, of course, before we made any decision on it. But that's just something for y'all to think about. Road and Drive comes in from the right-hand side down this way. No, we can do it. <coughs> road and right, right through there. Road and, yeah, Road and Drive, it's just a trail. Also, going to have this access off of Citadel Rocks. Hey, pardon? This, uh, this road over here coming in off Citadel, is that going to be open also? That's a water tank. Yeah. It says road. Goes up to the water tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the Citadel Rock Road subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you asking? There's a road that comes. I, I don't know. Into I, this I, road I have not talked to them about the infrastructure. There is no road access to that property other than possibly a dirt road. I don't know. What well, else? Since we. Bought a property up here that's above the old bakery, whatever the name was. Carter Park. Carter. Uh, part of it goes right on the mountain here, Citadel Rock Road, doesn't it? It, it goes or Citadel nearly Road. to the top of the mountain, yes. Okay. I don't think well, it actually breaches the top. So. Well, I started to say with my own, want to also look at possibly annexing yeah. some of that, doing it all the same time. Like I said, Mar Marlin is the sole property owner of these two parcels. There's no other adjoining property owner, so it could be a relatively simple matter for him to do a petition before y'all, should you choose to do so. But I did tell him it would be after the first of the year. Uh, in talking about annexation, has there been any progress made on Harlow Drive? Have we got anything back from the... I haven't looked at it, but... Uh, I haven't heard from anything. I've been out for a while. Okay. Uh, committee reports. Does any of our committees have a report from your departments? I have a report from our Robin does. Uh, from the rec center about the pool situation. If, <clears throat> if you want to share that. You know, just briefly, the, we ran into a snag replacing <coughs> the surge tank with the steel tank, and there's been another option presented to us that's going to save a little bit of money, and we're going to go with that option. Saving money is always good. <laughs> well, it's what, 23000 Was It's going to save about ten to 12000 Yeah. It's quite a... Mm -hmm. Give us several more years while we transition or decide what we're going to do there. I think it gives us the time we need. Anybody else have a committee report? Okay. Moving right along on number 
three, the ordinance 2018-07, setting mayor and council salary and benefits for the 2020 administration. This, of course, is the first reading. It will be carried over until the second meeting of the month. That'd be the 18th. Is that right? Yes. Okay, number four is resolution 2018-47, declaring a certain fire truck as surplus property no longer needed for public or municipal services. Well, we hate to see this one go, but time takes care of a lot of things. The 1974 model ladder truck, all 50 feet of it, still works, still pumps, and still functions, but it's exceeded its usefulness to the city. And while it's still running and functioning, we felt like we're going to sell it. We need to sell it. Somebody could possibly get some use out of it. If they don't have anything, it would still bring a little bit of money. And I, I, Ron, we've talked about this for several years, and it's time to put this piece of equipment out. Uh, it served its purpose well. The Opera House is still here because of it, and several other buildings in town. But uh, it's past doing what we need it to do. We get no ISO credit for it. Uh, to entertain, we go ahead and surplus this vehicle, sell it on good deals. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, number five, resolution 2018-48, authorizing an expense account for the council president and council members for the 2020 administration. I spoke with the League of Municipalities when we were drafting the ordinance, the ordinance which will change the mayor and council salary for 2020. Y'all had instructed uh, HR Director Fisher to come up with a plan. Part of that plan was to have a, a small expense account. They suggested that we do it separately from the ordinance and just have a resolution that stands on its own and keep the, the salary ordinance a little cleaner that way. So that's what this is. There again, it will not go into effect until the incoming administration. And that's a reimbursable. That's not that's a, a reimbursable, non-cumulative, $100 a month expense. Mm -hmm. okay. And your own money, turn in receipts exactly. for it, get reimbursed. So that's not additional money. Make a move to adopt that resolution. Second. They've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Then moving on to new business, authorize the purchase of a new fire rescue vehicle in the amount of $290,150 for delivery in 2020. Speak to that just briefly. The yeah, this, this is what we've talked about for the last year or so. We've put part of it in this year's budget and then the second half will come out of next year's budget. It's a, it's a commercial cabin chassis sale custom which saved the city approximately $160,000 on uh, It'll be manufactured in Southeast. It's not gonna be a foreign company building it. And uh, it comes with a 10 year warranty on the box. And possibly we can get an extension on the warranty on that too at no additional charge. Uh, we got prices from three or four different vendors. This was the better price for the better product. There was one came in a little bit cheaper, but it was an inferior product. And they were trying to cut a lot of them. The benefits we needed on the truck were taken off to get the cheaper price, so we didn't want to go that route. And uh, so far, I, I me with the committee and, and with Stacy as far all this is what we came up with the best buy for the money to benefit the city and, and the citizens. So, and this was in the budget, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and it will come in after October next year, right. so it will come out of the next year's budget. But we will we put money in this year's budget that will carry over, so we're actually not going to spend that money this year. And the city doesn't have to pay any of it. Right. Until the <clears throat> I'll make a motion to. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ron, do we need to notify them now that yes. it's approved? He's waiting to hear from me. And, uh, okay. He said whatever you needed, contract wise, whatever. Get, 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 get with me tomorrow, get a chance to we'll put together a letter on letterhead to get to them, and that should suffice. Okay. Okay, moving on to number seven. HR Director Fisher to discuss the possibility of eliminate seat bank. Don? Okay. Um, we, it's about time to renew this sit leave bank for our employees, and I'm looking through it. And uh, we, we actually haven't had any really, really follow-up. 
truth. But uh, in looking through it in the last three or four months, I've decided that we got two competing policies here. We have a sick leave bank for catastrophic need. When our employees run out of sick leave, they go to the sick leave bank or they go to catastrophic relief, which is also in this. So actually, we're, we're doing the same thing with one policy. I'd just like to do away with the sick leave bank. Whoever's in the sick leave bank, <coughs> if they're still employed with us, those, those hours would be returned to their sick leave account and just use the catastrophic relief clause, which is also in our personnel policy. So there's no need for this. This allows uh, 10 days of relief, which the employee has to pay back. If the employee is down to using this, you're not going to get it paid back. Um, employees put in the sick leave bank three days when they've got enough time that they can put in. And then at the end of the year, if they don't want to be in the sick leave bank anymore, they can go and withdraw those days back. So it's just, it's just a lot of redundant work for no need. When the employees are only using the catastrophic relief clause that we already have anyway. <clears throat> so in a lot of that, I'd like to request that we do away with the sick leave bank and just use catastrophic relief, which is in our personnel policy. Also, I want to say going forward in the next couple of months, <clears throat> I'll be looking closer at that catastrophic relief in our personnel policy and cleaning it up also <clears throat> and, and taking out some stuff that we don't need to have in there anymore. But you need this done first? I'd like to just, or, this looks like to me that it was adopted by the council in 1996. So I, we need to undo it before I can. Joe, I'll, I'll look and see if it was adopted by ordinance. I, I don't know. If, if it was, we'll have to undo it by ordinance. But if y'all were in the agreement in principle to do away with it, we would go forward with that. Yeah, is that going to affect the amount, the total amount of uh, sick time that you can build up? Or accumulate time? Yeah, if you can accumulate so much. Well, like if you get maxed out, you can't accumulate no more, but you're going to lose what you got accumulated. Well, let's, we just look at that and make, make, make sound judgment. Well, no, like if you're in the sick bank, you can actually build up more yeah. than if you're not in the sick bank. If you're so in the sick bank, you get 920, but if you're six, not in the sick bank, you only get 720. 960, yeah, you get 960. And then when you get 360, you get 45 days. Yeah. At night, you get Is it going to eliminate that? Well, yeah, I think it should. I mean, so we would not be able to build up as many hours in our sick bank. You're individual. Well, now hours. that would be a change that the council would have to make as well. So you're going to lose all the time that you've got built up. Like if you're about to retire, then you're going to lose all Well, you that. really don't have that time anyway. If you retire, you're only going to get you half of nine. You do if you've 37 years like I have. Well, you're only going to get half of nine. 360. Only, only you can get, Robin, it, it doesn't matter how many how many days you have built you up. When you, when you retire, it's kept at half, half at a nine. maximum of 45. Right. I don't want to lose that. No, no, no. You have no. lost it. Okay, that's all yeah. I want. That's yeah. all I want to make. <clears throat> no, that's not got anything to do with what we're talking about. I would uh, suggest that uh, instead of doing one today and looking at the other part later on, is just do it all at one time. Write up what you think ought to be done and let the council look at it. We'll so, lay it over next, next yeah. Meeting. Yeah, give us the opportunity to look at it, you know. Ahead of time, or would you make an Well, all, all I really want to do is, you know, if we're going to only use catastrophic relief, there's no need for an immediate five or six people to have to track down. The personnel department can be the committee. Um, we're trying to get the departments to start using the policy correctly. So, or actually, you're supposed to use this before you go to catastrophic relief. We've been doing it right the opposite because they haven't had the time here to use it properly. So most of the time when they, our, our payroll department finds out there's need for catastrophic relief, it's about 24 to 48 hours before the payroll needs to start. And, and they don't have time to stop and go track everybody down. So I'll make you enough recommendation. But like I said, this is competing with what we're already using. Well, can you meet with the department heads too and just discuss how it affects them? That's why I don't, I mean, I think you've thought it through, but evidently there's questions. I know during the years of catastrophic, I have helped probably eight or 10 employees 
by giving them two or three weeks of my time. And two or three of them have passed away. And one of them was my coworker that had cancer for a year. And I don't know how other people feel about it, but I'd hate to mess with something that affects people that something like that happens to. Well, was that being used properly or? The catastrophic relief and the sick leave bank are two different things. Yeah, I know that. What you're he saying? Used, he used every bit of his sick time, and then I give him two. My other guy gave him two, and that worked through till he passed away with cancer. That meant we still well, have that in place. Okay. And we always do. Well, I don't, I don't think the urgent the way I have to do right now. Well, you got to do it before January. You come back and you're going to have to start doing it letting people in or letting them back out. Well, if it's if it passed by ordinance. If it's passed by ordinance, it's going to have to be undone. Right? Yes. It's by if it's not, uh, but we can't find anything. I mean, it says it was adopted in 96. <clears throat> okay. Well, it sounds to me like basically we've got a duplication and an inconsistency <coughs> within our policies, and that will certainly needs to be straightened out. But uh, I think that it's very difficult to sit up here and understand exactly what the problem is, so it might be good to put it on with an understanding that if it has to be straightened out by ordinance that we'll waive the requirement and handle it at the next meeting so we get through with it by the 1st of December. Um, thanks. Okay. Uh, number eight. Marty Roberts to discuss the new event software. Is Marty here? Okay, come on up, Marty. All right, uh, last year we started using a software called Marcado that allows us to intake information from vendors, sponsors, uh, booking agents, anything you think of in one central location so it pops it out to the website it pops it out to if, if Andy needs to spread you on insurances it does that if you need a contract brought you'll send them all to you just a central hub for managing the festival uh, we use it for third saturday moon days and independence day celebration anything else we do we could actually use it for christmas and park if we ever had vendors um, before it was something we just did within boom day but since it involves multiple other departments now Don asked me to come to y'all about this. So. We would like to request, I don't feel like it's fair to use the boom day budget to pay for, it's a pretty big expenditure, $4,000, is that correct? Yes. Uh, it's a $4,000 expenditure per year. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. So I just don't feel like it's fair to burden the boom day budget for that when other entities or other, other festivals are using it as well. I felt like that we should request a budget adjustment for administration in my opinion. Was it reviewable? Uh, this one. I, I put it, it actually we used it in the email yesterday, today for yesterday, to reuse tomorrow, but I told them we had to fill up with the council and the committee before the anything, so they gave me an extension. Did your board recommend the purchase of <coughs> the, the board did not recommend, they, they said this, and I feel the same way, that's not something they could act on. I mean, yeah, they could buy it, but it's only, I guess, but did they recognize the, the use of it? Yeah, I mean, it was valuable. Yeah, that's one reason. Um, even ran, the reason it ran so smoothly this year was because of that software. Um, I mean, I can go back to using spreadsheet, but then you have multiple. And I've tried other software. I mean, it is expensive. Um, I knew we approved it last year, but I thought it was we just bought it. I didn't know it was per year. No. Right. And, and we ended up, you know, we talked about, I just in passing, mm -hmm. use it for boom day, see if it works, and use it for mm -hmm. events. Turns mm -hmm. out it's the same price regardless. <coughs> um, it, it, you know, when you're managing 250 vendors, it helps a lot because before we would have to get them the form, they fill it out, bring it back to us, us put it in the computer, request payment. Now they fill out the form, everything's automated, and when I need to contact 250 people, it's click a button, it's done. Everything's pre-populated, you know, automated. Is it capped on how many events you can use it? 
No, no, city glasses you can use as long as the city sanctions function or city supported function. So, but, and is there a budget function in there to help you keep up with your budget and your expenditures? Yes, it keeps up. Like, I can print off Jessica how much we paid for uh, artists. Um, she needs one mid year with the deposit bank. Do that. We can do um, vendors who have paid who have not paid. Same with sponsors. And, and I'll tell you, the, the biggest thing is, um, you know, continuity. If, if I were to be changed and sign more and step back from the transfer truck, y'all would be able to get it going for the people. I agree. So, I mean, that's, uh, Not that we want you to get run over by truck, Mark. But before you couldn't, you would be going through files and computers and thumb drives and four different software. And for now, it's all central water supplies. So. Well, just as a safety car, you may want to look before you step back. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I'll make the motion. Do you have the paperwork for the budget adjustment? Well, I only have the budget adjustment form. I don't have the actual. I've got. I got the invoice and stuff. I can give you that. I'll make a motion. Just make a motion to approve it, and you make a Present. motion. Okay. Do the budget adjustment next time. Perfect. They got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Mark needs to make you aware of some, some uh, equipment issues we have in the auditorium. And just, uh, y'all, nothing we want you to decide right now, but you just need to be aware of what's going on over there. It's just, in the last two weeks, just come to our attention. Um, the papers I got in, John, I gave it to you, um, outlines kind of what we're experiencing. Um, our console is starting to go out uh, sporadically. Some shows it'll work, some shows it won't. Luckily, it comes on eventually. Um, we had Bub and his guys check the outlets to make sure it wasn't an issue there. They're fine. We checked the other sequential power circuit. Those are fine. Um, it's, the board's making loud rackets. It's, it's about to go out. It's just a matter of time. Um, really, there's nothing we can do if we order something for the rest of our events by the end of the year. Um, so I've got things in place to, with Dan at Rogers if something were to go out. Um, but we need to replace the console. Uh, we'll get it fixed. Um, don't know if it's worth fixing because it's so old. Um, our projector will also have issues with it. Um, it's some motor issues and the bulb went out was replaceable, but it's something we've been having issues with for a while. It's finally getting to the point where we're going to have to do something about it. Um, we're talking about at the auditorium. Yes. Yeah. And we're getting to where, you know, this year, um, we had events, you know, 30 weeks out of the year. Uh, or by then, really, would have. So it's starting to pick up over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had other stuff go out. Other than Buck's been able to fix it. So the big things. Um, and you're, well, talking about this. you're talking about equipment that's been in the auditorium ever since we remodeled. Yeah, for 13 yeah. years, I guess. Yeah. Are we keeping it covered up? No, no. Does it need to be covered up? Yeah. It, it's not dusty in there, but I mean, it, it, Dan said it's, it was. It's and, dusty everywhere. Yeah, it is. It's not like the theater. Um, so but it still would last longer, probably, or take care of. Yeah. I mean, that board has lasted a long time. I, mean, I was going to say, it's just like me, it's all it needs to be warmed. <laughs> we should turn it on early. All right. Stop it. Don't even go there. Have you got any comments on it, what you thought? Since you used to be the... Uh, I didn't need to be replaced. It, it, was, it, was, it was starting before Mari took this over and everything. Uh, I know we had requested budgeted stuff there. Can you kind of just yeah. put something together? Okay. Hey, I need this and this and this and this. We'll yeah, I, I've got prices in those sheets and stuff. Who um, has uh, that? It's, it's right there. Um, I did not put the our lighting situation when you put the budget. I think we'll do conditional policy. Um, it's not very bright for the stage in the area in front of the stage. Uh, we have a lot of complaints uh, about every show, every event. Um, we need some lights to hit that. But most of we use that area in front of the stage to hit that area. And then course on the stage as well. Um, so that, that's what y'all think. Put some plan yeah. together and we'll look at it. We did make some of that conditional so we can take it off the ship. Yeah. Uh, I know we don't do as many events at the auditorium, but a lot of our bigger, more, you know, governor, legislators, legislators, uh, representatives, like that, they all do their events there. Um, so I know it was a real damn last event that I was yeah. in there. Yeah. So, and it, it won't be too, it may be a big purchase, but it won't be. Price 
from the projector, <coughs> the soundboard, and the lights? Yes. Kind of, okay. Yeah. And what I recommend doing, if it's something we can do before next budget, is get enough to get us by and then look at it later on. Because I mean, we'll get, we've got a lot of lights there. It will get expensive, but we can get by with minimal right now. Well, at least if you give us a price, we'll know what we're looking at. Yeah. Would it not be a, an, an advantage to put an in house? Projector over there instead of what we got. You got to set up, tape down because I mean, that's, would, that's yeah. a lot of wear and tear on that thing. Yeah, it, that, that screen um, here recently is getting put up, put down every week. Um, Sometimes I do it by myself, and that's how it gets broke. And, and that's why you know. So you need screen and screen. projector? Is that what we're yes. saying? We talked about getting one that you know, <coughs> drop down screen. screen. Yeah. It would help a lot. I know that we still keep the one we got. It's not like the high school uses it uh, for senior night and stuff. So we have that available that we can take different places. Even the theater, sometimes I'd have to use one there. Um, Plus, with that, with that type of equipment, you're going to be better off if it stays in house all the time. And it, you know, I agree. letting it go I agree. up here and somebody that's never right. run that piece of equipment before <laughs> sets it up and then they change all of your adjustments on it and everything. It takes forever to get it back in the sink over here. What's your rough estimate on the cost? Um, a mechanical screen, you're looking at around. Uh, five grand installing off. Um, I, I would probably say just get one that's on a pulley. You can just pull. It'd be cheaper that way. Um, projector is still going to be around twenty five hundred dollars, depending on where we mount it. Um, the lights are about <coughs> four hundred bucks a piece, five hundred bucks a piece. <coughs> so I don't, I don't know where the figures are on it or anything, but those lights, when we put the lights there in, it was projected to put lower in at a later date. That we never did get done. <coughs> so Wasn't there some commitment, or was has it already been done from uh, Nathaniel and Steve? Yes, they gave us um, half of that, and uh, Ronnie's working on the other half. And we did, um, that was for the equipment the theater, to replace okay. the cables and stands and stuff. Um, but not for the auditorium? From them some, uh, well, the cost of the auditorium actually comes out of administration. Okay. So they come out of budget. All right. You're looking at, you know, without without a mechanic, you know, electronic or pulley projector, you're still looking at probably with board and all around ten grand. And that's putting in putting, you know, unplugging the lights over there and plugging these lights in and using existing infrastructure that's there. Um, you know, so that, that's so it's a big chunk but it's not, you know, could be a lot worse. Well one of the things we had asked uh, Mari to do is to get more use out of the city of auditorium so it's kind of a good deal that we need equipment because yeah. it is being used more. Good problem to have. Yeah. 30 weeks out of the year is pretty good. Yeah. What did y'all decide if anything about Don's request to change the coding on his software get it out of boom days? Yeah. yeah. Do you need a separate, separate yeah. motion for that? Uh, while we're talking about the auditorium, uh, I'm going to have to leave early today for another appointment. Uh, Senator Livingston and uh, Representative Ledbetter helped a uh, State of the State address out at Northeast recently, and they have asked to come to Fort Payne and do one at the auditorium. Uh, what they did out at Northeast was they had a breakfast, and they had a you know, just like breakfast, pastries or whatever. Uh, and they, they would do either a morning or an afternoon at the auditorium and they figured we could probably uh, count on about a hundred people showing up. And they just asked was we willing to do that and sure. provide for the refreshments. Uh, I'll tell you we have funerals over there so we can certainly accommodate them. Well, I knew we would, but I wanted to mention that before I, before I obligate. Now, this will be in January or February, Dave. And will they choose day or, I mean, morning or afternoon, or is that something we need to? Uh, well, if, if whatever your preference is. I would prefer the afternoon myself, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Make sure Marty looks at it. Yeah. yeah. And one other thing that I wanted to bring up, I know this is out of, out of order, but uh, since I'm going to have to leave, 
I talked with Al Dot yesterday. I talked to him about every other day. Uh, there's been a hitch on the uh, south end road developments. The way they've got that thing set up is they set it up as one federal project, which includes the airport road and both the roundabouts. Then they split it up into three state projects. Well, the feds don't like the way one of the roundabouts is lying, so they're having to go back and redo all of that, and the best they can determine that it's going to delay us at least a year. They want the federal money before they get started, and I don't blame them as far as that goes. Don't seem like it would take that long, but that's where they get it. So we're looking at two years probably before we get any major work done out there. That's on the intersection there? Yeah, yeah. They're going to do that first, but they want the feds' approval before they do it. That's just a matter of information. You got anything else, Mayor, before you have to spot out? Uh, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right, moving on down the agenda, budget item uh, adjustment for the iPads. For our iPads we've been talking about, ended up being 2336, 2336 over what we had budgeted. That included the Apple Care project above. You need a motion? Yeah. So moved. We got a motion. Do we have a second? We got a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, number 10 discussion about picking up leaves as referenced in Ordinance 2013 08. Tim touched on that a little bit downstairs. We've had every year we fight this battle with are we or are we not going to pick up leaves. And the problem is, is the interpretation of the existing ordinance is if contractors do it, we're not supposed to pick them up. So it causes Tim and his crew problems because driving down the road, he don't know if the contractor blew the leaves out in the gutter or if the property owner did. So I think he made reference downstairs to the purchase of an additional leaf machine and we pick up all leaves or change the verbiage in the ordinance to where we explicitly do or explicitly don't. Right, we're planning it up, forget about this. It's just turning yeah. on fire that it needs to be. I, think we need to. I don't know how you tell sometimes. And it, the leaves are such a problem for everyone, you know, mm -hmm. and the yard looks so much better regardless of whether it's the contractor or the homeowner. To bear the burden and, and continue on like we've been at. If we clean this ordinance up, all right, I'll get together and we'll clean this ordinance up right. to where it makes it crystal clear that leaves are to leave. Leaves are leaves. Leave or leave. Leave or leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good with that? Right. Good with that. No, not right now. But y'all did want to go ahead and pursue right. the purchase of the yes. leaf machine. Yes. 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 Second. Second. Just okay. Uh, got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So, I did. Why, why do y'all know me? I'm Robert Davis. Lived here for 20 some odd years. Came back. There's a lot of question on the leaves from uh, from a residential section. Do you put them in the street, or you put if you put them on part of your grass, they don't get picked up, or they do? So I understand, but I think on the city website it needs to be stated that in order for the city to pick it up, it has to be on the city property because I had a pile of leaves that sat there for you know three or four weeks until I called and got it figured out. It's like, hey, if it's on your grass, you know, we've had some problems about it being damaged property and it needs to be in the thing, but there's nowhere that I saw that even states that. So it may be something that needs to be, you know, addressed for people like me that have moved back to town, people that move into town, because I do see a lot of leaves piled up in people's yards that never get moved, and, and rightly so, because I wouldn't want my yard hurt, torn up either, you know. So that's just a suggestion on my part. That's, you know, because really I was, Pretty puzzled on that for quite a while until I called, and I can't remember who I talked to. And they're very nice about it and explained it. So, okay, maybe we can put that in the ordinance wording. 
somehow to identify that. Figure it out. Figure it out. Right. Yeah. But it, you can put it in the paper that to, to pick up the leaves, it needs to be in the gutter. Yeah, that, if we could get together on that. Another thing we're going to do is if it has debris in it, our leaf machine can't pick it up. Okay. The, yeah, the we'll, 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 and also put that in there, Teresa, that it needs to be debris free. I mean, if it's got other stuff in it, then the leak won't pick it up. Yeah, but it, it changes the particles because, uh, so you can't hide your beer bottles in <laughs> soccer balls or yeah. rust piles. Kim, can you come give her the amount for that so we can, for the leaf machine? Are we? Are we? Yes. Yeah. But we need the amount. Uh, if it's not in your budget. Total, no, it's going to have to be a budget adjustment. Right. Forty-two thousand for the machine and ninety-five for the other machine. Yeah. Total. Forty-two total for one. Fifty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Five. It's going to be paid out of gas. 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 Gas.
get you something together. Here, Waterboard, uh, Wade, Wade Hills, term expires December the 18th. And the Improvement Authority, Randy Moses' term expires the 31st of December. He is uh, he was appointed last year to finish out Tim Sugar's remaining term after his resignation. So. We're taking applications for all of those? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to set a deadline for it, for applications. Back on your normal publishing schedule. Get with me, run. Get with me tomorrow, and we'll get something in the paper for this weekend. How long will that give it? We run it. We run it Saturday. We 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 a week plus four days. some developments in the, since the agenda came out and uh, Andy and I would jointly request a, an executive session to uh, discuss industrial recruitment. Make a motion to go into executive session. Before, before we actually go into executive session, does anybody have anything, any, any audience, have anything they want to bring before the council? Well, we reached an agreement with them. Um, I don't know that there's a specific time limit, but uh, there's two instances where a train stop. Uh, the first instance is when they are passing another train. Uh, they stay stopped long enough for the other train to pass, then they move. Uh, if, if there is a, the other instance where there are trains stopped, uh, the train uh, is when uh, uh, train engineers now have the same rules as truck drivers and uh, airline pilots, etc. When they get to a certain point, they got to stop wherever they are and get off the train. Uh, and uh, if it's going to be more than a few hours, then they will split that train uh, at First Street. Uh, under no sir, they're they're not ever blocking all of the crossings because. Uh, they can only stop those trains where there are double tracks. Those double tracks uh, end prior to 8th Street North, so all the, the northern passes are generally open except for a moving train. Uh, if the train is short enough, uh, they are trying to cooperate by, shot, by stopping south uh, of 3rd Street. And so normally if it's a short train, even if it's stopped for a while, the third street uh, exit is always open. Uh, I would reiterate what we talked about before. Uh, the city of Fort Payne is totally without authority or ability to regulate trains. Uh, we used to have ordinances uh, that address those. Those have been ruled unconstitutional. It's interstate commerce and entirely controlled by the federal government. We can't, we can't set speed limits. We can't set times when they can or cannot block and, and they actually own uh, a hundred foot strip right through the, the middle of Fort Payne. So uh, the, but they, since we have met with them, have tried to be more cooperative. Uh, the, if they have been uh, reactive when we have contacted them uh, and they have tried very hard to, to block less than they were before, uh, which none of which are they required to do, but that's what they're doing at this point. I feel like it's improved. Well, there was. Yeah, I think it has improved. It, it's a, it has improved. This morning, there was a, early this morning, there was a train that was stopped here in town blocking some uh, of the crossings, and it was a mechanical issue, and that's something, you know, that we can't help, they can't help. It just, you know, thankfully it didn't take that very long to get it repaired, but it was, was a mechanical issue. 
Okay, anybody else? Cynthia? I'd like to invite everybody, uh, children of all ages, to come to the DeKalb County Public Library next Tuesday from 345 until 5 to tell Santa your Christmas wishes. He will be there and bring your on camera, and it's free for everyone, and get you a <coughs> cup of hot chocolate as well. Don't forget Christmas in the Park on Friday. Yeah, Christmas in the Park starts at 4 o'clock, and it will not be the parade night. The parade night will be the next Friday night. So invite everybody to come out Friday night to come to Christmas in the Park. And I would just like to take the chance, too, to thank all the city workers that have worked on the Christmas lights, especially Tim and your group. But your group, um, and I think people are enjoying our new little visitors downtown. Well, they're not little, but the... Yeah, if you haven't been downtown since the the uh, reindeer been down there. Go down there and check them out. Okay. We got, we, we got a motion. Yes. We got a second. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. We appreciate everybody coming and uh, hope you have a good rest of the week. And Trish, this is informational.